You make positive meaning, empowering meanings of things that happen in your life. You're not a victim. You're not a victim. You're a Muslim. You're not a victim. Things don't happen to you, they happen for you. Remember this. You need some. You cannot just Amazon Prime it. You make a dua. I'm watching my status from the dua alone. Where is it? That's not how it works. You love Allah so much that you don't want to disappoint Him. It is not the fear of Allah, it's the fear of disappointing Allah because Allah, I love you so much. I don't want you to be disappointed in me. When we love Allah, we listen to Allah. Why was it that the five pillars that we have, 80% of them came in Medina. The time in Mecca was focused on that 20%, but that 20% is the 80%. But the way for us to love Allah is by understanding who Allah is. Nothing happens in your life, nothing, without the permission of Allah. Get that in your head. And alhamdulillah, نَحْمَدُ وَنَسْتَعِينَهُ وَنَسْتَغْفِرُهُ وَنَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ شُرُورِ أَنفُسِنَا وَمِنْ سَيَّاتِ أَعْمَالِنَا مَنْ يَحْدِ اللَّهُ فَلَا مُدِلَّ لَهُ وَمَنْ يُدْلِلْ فَلَا هَادِيَ لَهُ وَأَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا أَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise and we thank Him for everything He's provided for us. And we acknowledge that indeed the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is indeed the Messenger of Allah. We also bear witness that there is no guidance except from the guidance of Allah. And if Allah chooses and allows you to go to be guided, there's none who can misguide you. And if Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala allows you to be led astray, there's none who can guide. And of course we bear witness that there's nothing worthy of worship and obedience except Allah. Allah SWT tells us in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amunu taqallaha haqqa tuqati wa la tumutunna illa wa antum muslimun Oh you who have believed, oh you who believe, do not die in any other condition except the submission of your will to Allah Azza wa Jal. Do not die in any condition except Islam. And to have taqwa, God consciousness, fear, mindfulness, awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today's topic is supposed to be about taqwa, but it's gonna bounce around between taqwa and tawakkul. It's gonna bounce around the two because it's needed. And you see, when we think of taqwa, we all understand it means fearing Allah, be conscious of Allah, consciousness of Allah. That's what taqwa has its association with. I like to think of the example that usually you might be driving really, really fast. But if perhaps your app, or maybe you spot something where that there's a police car ahead, you might monitor your speed a little more. You might be driving at a very fast, uh, you know, pace over here on these roads. But then you see one of those cameras that say 25 miles only because of the schools, and you slow down a little bit. That's the idea of taqwa. You see, oh, whoa, 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 they're watching me. They're, they're aware of me. Hence, I gotta be more mindful of my own habits. You see, that's how we have to be with Allah, but His example is far higher. That when we are alone, privately, there are no cameras physically here. But we have Allah as a wajal recording everything. There's angels assigned to us to record every single thing that we have done. There's evidence. CCTV is nothing compared to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for us. When we think taqwa, we think of being afraid that, oh, Allah will see me which is definitely a part of taqwa, which is definitely a part of being conscious of Allah. But it is not that we should be just fearing Allah, we should be fearing disappointing Allah. We shouldn't just fear like, oh my God, Allah's gonna punish me. That's one side of the argument, that's one way to think about things. And if that works for you to help you stay in line, mashallah, go for it. But try doing something else too. Try leading with love. Try leading with the idea that perhaps you love Allah so much that you don't want to disappoint Him. It is not the fear of Allah, it's the fear of disappointing Allah because Allah, I love you so much. I don't want you to be disappointed in me. The opposite is true when we know that when Allah loves you, He tells the angels, telling the angels to tell the creation that He loves such and such. That is the level that we have to get to, taqwa. Conscious of Allah, that man, I just did a really good deed. Why is it that when we think of taqwa, it's only when there's negative deeds? Only, oh, fearful. No, no, no. But what about when you're giving that charity, taqwa? 
Allah, you're going to accept this from me. You're watching. So I did this only for you, Allah. My fear, my love is only for you, Allah. I love you, Allah. Hence, I do this. You see, as a school teacher myself, I've learned something. That when your students love you, they'll listen to you. Sah? When your students love you, they'll listen to you. When we love Allah, we'll listen to Allah. Why was it? That the five pillars that we have, 80% of them came in Medina. The time in Mecca was focused on that 20%. But that 20% is the 80%. It is the most important part, which is the Tawheed, the oneness of Allah, the love of Allah, the reverence of Allah. Because if the first ayat of the Quran was about abandoning wine, that would have been tough. That would have been really tough. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did was strategic. He said that this is what I'm going to do for the entire time you're in Mecca. I'm going to make sure that you fall in love with worshiping Allah, loving Allah, obeying Him. You love to obey Him. Once you do that, when the ayah of the Quran comes out for disposing of the wine, the streets of Medina were filled. Because when you love Allah, you listen to Allah. That's the fact. But the way for us to love Allah is by understanding who Allah is. And that comes from multiple sources, multiple ways that you can do that. You can perhaps read the 99 names of Allah and fall in love with the names of Allah. Learn to call Allah by his different unique names. Play a game with yourself. You know what Allah, today for 99 straight days, I'm going to use a new name for you every single day. I'm going to call you by that name today, all day. Tomorrow, new day, new name, all day. And act upon it. Act upon those names and repeat them. Find yourself making dua and you're subdued, calling to Allah with the most beautiful of names. And you'll see how your life will change around. With the help and permission of Allah, with his knowledge, with his, you know, approval, it will change. By the grace of Allah. The second part that I want to talk to you about is tawakkul. Is trusting in Allah. Trusting in Allah that Allah is indeed the one who runs your affairs. Nothing happens in your life. Nothing without the permission of Allah. Get that in your head. Nothing will happen in your life without the permission of Allah. Good or bad. If you feel like something bad is happening to you, notice I'm quoting the bad. Because it's only bad if you make it that meaning. If you make the meaning of what's happening in your life right now to be bad, oh, Allah hates me, it's a punishment. That's what's happening, then you're probably right. Because the Messenger Sallallahu has reported, narrated a hadith to us, Qudsi, about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to his servants as they believe and will perceive him to be. So if you're here interpreting the meanings of your life, of all the situations and circumstances that's happening in your life to be something horrible, Allah doesn't like you, He doesn't love you, He's punishing you, then maybe that's what you're going to get. Everything after that is, oh, Allah, what did I do that? Oh, stuff like that. Now, you should be saying, it's the thought. You should be turning it around. But the meaning you're making is wrong. What if the meaning is, Allah, you're developing me? It's a different meaning now. Allah, you're testing me. You're sculpting me. You're teaching me how to be patient. That's a different meaning. Now, if your meaning is, Allah, you're teaching me sabr. Allah, you're teaching me to be, have more consciousness, have more tawakkul. Now, once you believe that and feel that, you're going to invite the tests and challenges of Allah. Allah, give me more. I want more development, Allah, because you embrace them and you step into the challenges instead of running away from them. In the second part of the khutbah, inshallah, we're going to be talking about the tawakkul and something that's happening in our main life right now that we can take lessons from Surah Kaf as well, too. So the first part was about taqwa. It's about consciousness of Allah. And it's not necessarily about just fearing Allah, though that is one dimension of it. I'm telling you to lead more with love and understand that if you interpret that I want to love Allah so much that I will listen to Him more, that is how you go down that path. And there will be times that you have to use fear. When there's a, a moment where, where you have to apply that, like, Allah, you're watching me, I need to stop. Allah, I'm about to do something wrong, I need to stop. You're fearing Allah. 
But throughout your day, it shouldn't be that way. It should be, Allah, how can I make you more happy with me? That will cause you to increase with more taqwa. How can I make you more proud of me? How can I make you love me more? When you lead with those types of questions, when you make meaning of your life like that, trust me, you look for every opportunity to please Allah because your mindset is, I am here to worship Allah and to please Him. That is my mindset. Tawakkul. What's that all about? It comes from the main roots, the main root, which is one of Allah Azawajal's name, al wakil The one who's in charge of authorizing, authorizing your affairs. His, your affairs are authorized by him. You know, when you use your debit card or something like that, it's his authorization. Your cards have chips in them, like little SIM cards, and they're calling the bank to see, can you authorize this? Allah's example is far higher. When you raise your hands to Allah, you're calling him directly, al wakil Oh Allah, oh al wakil help me. Authorize the affairs for me. If it's good for my deen, my dunya, my akhira, Allah, authorize it for me. Accept it, approve it, Allah. Give it the stamp of approval for me, Allah. But Allah, if it's not good for my deen, my dunya, akhira, Allah, prevent it from happening. Replace it with something better for me. You see, in Surah Kaf, one of the parts of al Kaf is about tawakkul. And there's three stories about tawakkul. <laughs> there's three stories about tawakkul. And they all lead with something, there's a main lesson that we all forget. That tawakkul is not possible. Listen to what I'm saying. Tawakkul is not possible if you don't have sub. You need sub. You cannot just Amazon Prime and you make a du'a, I'm watching my status for the du'a, Allah, where is it? That's not how it works. You've been brainwashed by tracking statuses that, oh, I just need to know where things are. No, there's an ilm al ghaib there's unknown, unseen, Allah has knowledge of that. Your du'a is going to the unseen, the unknown, but Allah heard it, He approved it, He's al wakil Now it's a matter of you having sabr and preparing and waiting for the du'a to come true to come to life, to, to come to fruition. The first time required taqwa. Taqwa and Allah that you fear Allah that I'm only going to be doing whatever pleases Allah. The, the, the you know, Musa al Islam and the man that he was with were going. And we know the story, they punctured the boat. For them, for the, for the fishermen, they had no idea. But they had full tawakkul in Allah. Allah's going to handle it. Yeah, my boat might be damaged. That might take away my livelihood. But Allah is going to handle it. Why? Because I have to walk with it. Oh, I got a flat tire. Oh, my car just got damaged. Allah is for a good reason. I have to walk with you. You make positive meaning, empowering meanings of things that happen in your life. You're not a victim. You're not a victim. You're a Muslim. You're not a victim. Things don't happen to you. They happen for you. Remember this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching everything. So remember that. But they had tawakkul. But Musa al-Islam lacked sub. So he couldn't see the benefits of that tawakkul because he couldn't wait. Okay, then what happens? I'm going to skip and then I'm going to come back to the middle one. The last one. Oh, they go to a town. Musa al-Islam and the companion. They go to that town. And in that town, they're not treated nice, terrible treatment. But they have tawakkul. The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to honor them and take care of them no matter what. They come upon these orphans and they help raise the wall. It was a falling wall, they help raise it. They had full tawakkul that whatever has happened, the family, they don't know what's going on. You're raising my wall, putting it down, we're orphans. What do we have? We have nothing but Allah. They had full tawakkul and Allah, that Allah, we're orphans, we have a mom, but you know what? Allah, you're going to take care of us. But Musa al Islam couldn't understand. So what happens? Musa al Islam questioned him because he had no sabr. He had no avid summer. Listen, they had, these are the Anbiya. They had the most summer. But even them, they needed even more summer. There's something in human beings that requires us to have summer. And it's the most difficult thing. But it's also an act of worship. It's also something Allah Azza wa Jal loves when he sees his servant, his slave, his worshiper, exercising summer. Notice I use the word exercising summer. Meaning, it's a muscle. It could be developed. You can make it stronger. If you don't have summer now, Allah's going to keep putting you in situations and circumstances to make you develop the, the summer muscle. So what happens next? We know the story. 
they got older, Allah SWT wanted to do that so that when they become older and they're stronger, they can take care of the treasure that their father had left behind. Okay. I want to talk to you about the last thing that requires tawakkul, which is death. Which is death. It's one of the most difficult things that a human being has to go through. Even the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had a year named after it, and it was the year of sorrow. Why? Because of the death. Death is tough on everyone, including the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So if you're someone who's experiencing loss, the number one thing that you have to realize is that it's okay if you feel real bad. It's okay. Even the best of humans who walk this earth felt bad. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We're allowed to feel bad too. But you never lose tawakkul. You never question the decree of Allah. Why? He's, he's al mukid You don't question his decree. Why? He is al mukid He is the one who approved the death. That means it was good for you. There's a lesson for you. You might have to make a meaning of it. So what happens? These parents, they see a kid, and Musa al-Islam, and his companion, and his companion kills the kid. Wow, oh my God, that's so scary. Kills the kid, Musa al-Islam is losing it. He's like, how can you just, innocent soul, what are you doing? And at the time, of course, Musa al-Islam didn't have the summer required, but then later on we find out that this child was going to grow up to be someone that the parents would not have liked. He would have been difficult upon the parents, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides to remove that child. And what happens? When a child passes away, it's Jannah. It's a, it's a clear ticket to Jannah. You're good. And guess what? The patience that the parents have to exercise helps them get to Jannah too. Wow, a two for one deal. What a coupon. You thought it was bad for you. Allah said, no, 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 no. That child that got taken away, they're in Jannah. You're going to be patient with this. You're going to be in Jannah too. Amazing. The reason I'm sharing this with you is because recently I heard of a seven-year-old beautiful girl dying, passing away in Brooklyn. And I want to use, you know, like you try to think of softener words, passing away, dying, taken away, but there's nothing to really express how you feel about death, especially when it comes to your kid. This is the most difficult time in anyone's life, especially in a parent's life, because this is where they imagine it's getting checked. Do you believe in Allah? Yes. Do you really believe when you say inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajim? Do you really believe that? If so, now's the time to exercise that. It's so easy for us to hear about it, feel a little sad, say inna lillahi. Oh, it's tough. It's really tough. But this requires those parents, any parents who have lost a child, to have a ton of tawakkul. A ton of tawakkul to Allah, nothing happens without your permission. And Allah, this is good for me. This is good for my deen, my dunya, my akhir. Allah, you have taken my child away from me, but I haven't lost them. Why? Because they're waiting in Jannah for me. Allah, this is my ticket to Jannah. So a Muslim never loses. We don't know how to lose because we always win. And if you want to win as a Muslim, you have to make more positive and empowering meanings of life and the circumstances and situations that happen to you and for you in this dunya. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad kama salli ta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim inna kahim al-Jeeb. Allahumma barak ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad barak ta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ibrahim inna kahim al-Jeeb. Oh Allah, we ask you to help us develop taqwa. We ask you, Allah, to help us develop taqwa and God consciousness and love for you, Allah, and understanding for you, Allah. And we ask you, Allah, to help us please develop more tawakkul in you, Allah, to trust in you, Allah, to allow us to call you by your beautiful names, Allah. We ask you, Allah, to help us, guide us to the straight path, Allah, to prevent us from going astray, Allah, and to allow us to quit all of our bad deeds and habits that are stopping us from getting closer to you. Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, we need you. We need you, Allah. Allow us to always remember that and allow us to never even for a blinking of an eye to think that we are in charge of our affairs. Jazakum khair once again for listening. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa salli ta'ala wa rahim wa ala Ibrahim 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 wa ala Ibrahim